Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here, and I have an adorable project for you today. It is a little box that holds a Cadbury cream egg, and I think you can get these in a bunch of different varieties now. Um, I'm using Instacart right now, so I'm not really in the stores, but uh, my shopper found me some um, Cadbury caramel eggs that look so cute in this box. Last night, you know, there's certain projects that just speak to me. And this is one of them because look at how cute this is. It's got like this angle closure and it opens up like this. And then I've got this kind of, I'm, I'm gonna have to tip it like this but um, it's, uh, it's got a little hole in it for the Easter egg. So it's just really, really cute. And I know you're gonna love it. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to make that today. And um, if you're new to me, um, welcome. And um, I send out project sheets to my email list subscribers. They come into your inbox on Saturday. So if you wanna get a project sheet for this, fabulous project make sure that you subscribe and that link is down below in the description of this video you might have to click on show more and you will be able to subscribe if you're already a subscriber you should be getting um, the project sheets um, uh, every Saturday I'm pretty consistent with that so um, if you're not getting them uh, make sure you add my email address to your inbox because Sometimes, you know, um, I send them out, but email list providers, they sometimes block emails. So um, check your spam box too, because that's where um, my thing might end up. Um, but I, it has that project sheet for you. And then um, this is what it looks like. I'm working on my now. I've not completely done this one. That's why I always send them out on Saturday because um, uh, it takes a while to put everything together. So I, I want to make sure that everything's right before I send it out. Um, and on my second page, I'm working on this one because there, there's some diagrams that I want to show you um, so that you have them as ready reference. So I hope you appreciate the effort I put into that. Um, and um, that's I want it correct. So that's why I send it out at the end of the week rather than the same day. Um, it's just uh, I want to make sure it's all good for you. What else do I need to say? Um, if you're a new person to my channel, if you want to subscribe to my channel, make sure you look for that little person floating down at the bottom uh, in the pink shirt, I believe, right now. Um, and if you click on that, that will take you to my subscribe page and you can subscribe. And then if you click on the bell, that's the notifications and you can set your notifications on how you want to be notified or how often. Um, this project um, was designed by me, but I wanna also mention a shout out to Crafty Caroline um, because I did look up her video um, so that I could see how she did her angle box. Mine's a little different. Um, but I just wanted to give a shout out to her. You can find a link to her blog post over on my blog. Um, all the supplies that I'm gonna talk about today, um, if you want to place an order with me, um, they are available over on my um, blog. So if you click on over there, uh, I have a supply list and you can have a, a look at everything that I use today. Um, I will talk about the, the supplies as I'm making things, but if you wanna find out more information, you can click over there. Okay, I've talked enough, right? Um, I will also um, look at all your comments afterwards. And um, so I'll do the video. And then if you have any questions or if I do something that it doesn't resonate with you, you don't understand it, let me know. And when I'm going through the comments at the end, I will try and catch it and answer your question for you. All right, let's get started. Um, I have a question right here. I just saw that um, came up. Um, so my shopper couldn't get me the little um, box of eggs. They, these ones were loose ones. So I don't know if I have the ounces on here. Um, I guess I might have to find that out afterwards. Um, 
you know, I, I guess these are the cream eggs. They are, I'm measuring it on my ruler. They are about, um, not quite two inches, a little less than two inches tall um, by, I want to say just over one and a quarter inch wide at its widest portion. So if that helps at all. Sorry, I don't have, um, these were loose eggs um, that were in a box because he couldn't find any in a box. So I'm like, get me something cream egg because that's what I wanted. I, I, I would, had this vision for this box. And so anyway, I hope that helps a little bit and um, I'll see if I can put something on my blog a little bit more specific um, because I think it's kind of the standard um, Easter cream egg. All right, heading over to my other camera. Okay, let's set this up. I also, if I have time at the end, I also wanted to show you how you can use um, the tiny clear treat boxes are also a two inch cube, which these ones are. So you could also put your insert inside one of these and then just tie it with ribbon. This is kind of like an alternate project. I, it's not quite as sweet and, and cute, it, but it, it does, this is kind of like the easy button on the project, buy the boxes, put in the insert, and then tie them with ribbon, and then you can um, gift them. I didn't have a, a big chance on these ones to decorate it up more, I just ran out of time. And I wanted to show you this cute, cute closure. Look how cute this is when it's got ribbon around it. it it's adorable. I, I was just so in love last night. Okay. A couple of things that you will need for the insert where the little egg sits. Um, you will need um, some circle dies. Um, and I'm going to be using this the smallest um, scallop circle. And these little ridges kind of help that little egg stay in place. So I kind of like that. I'll, to decorate up, I'm going to be using the Arrange a Wreath bundle. And I'm going to be using some of the flowers on that. Um, I'm going to be using the um, Hippo um, Hippo and Friends dies uh, for this label for the inside piece. Um, a wish for everything. I'm going to use the Easter greeting for the inside. And I actually used a few stamps from the Arrange a Wreath. This is a bundle. Okay. You can save 10% when you buy these two together. And I'm going to be using this stamp here and the Happy Easter stamp. So let me put those all aside and I want to show you how to make the box. So we're going to start with a piece of eight and a half by six inch cardstock. I'm going to move my shift my camera a little bit. It's always crooked these days. I need to get it back straight. Okay. I love to use my scoring board because it's the easiest thing to score on. And then we're gonna switch to the trimmer to make some of the cuts. So eight and a half by six, choose whatever color you want. I'm going to be using the Hydrangea Hill. I think it's Hydrangea Hill, wait. Hydrangea Hill paper. So purple looks really nice with that. So eight and a half inch side up at the top, and we're gonna score at the two inch mark, the four inch mark, the six inch mark, and the eight inch mark. Turn it a quarter turn, and then we're gonna score at the two inch mark and the four inch mark. Pretty easy so far, right? Okay, let me sit this aside for a second trade it out for the trimmer. Okay, now here you're gonna have to pay attention and I really love using the trimmer for this rather than scissors. And I'm gonna show you why, because we are going to cut tabs on the first, third, and fifth segments. I don't know if you can see my score lines very well. So we're gonna have the short side up at the top first, third and fifth segments. And we wanna create tabs. It's far easier to do this on a trimmer 
like this, the Stampin' Up trimmer, than it is with scissors. So we're not gonna line up on the score line. We are gonna line up at the four and a half inch mark. So my score line is right here and my cut line is just over. Score line, cut line, four and a half inch mark right here. So we're gonna have to pick up this this piece right here, this cutting blade, because we're not gonna cut all the way through. We're gonna cut in sections. So we're gonna start up at the top and we're going to cut down to the first score intersection. And I think it's always easier when you do this standing up. So I'm gonna come down and cut just to the first score intersection, okay? You can kind of see where I stopped. Lift up your blade and bring it down to the next one. So we're gonna cut this third section. Cut in between like that. So you can see one, the third, and now we're gonna do the fifth. And my um, smaller, my smallest segment is down here at the bottom, but it doesn't really matter if it were up top here, it's the same, first, third, fifth and then just cut that last little piece. So I hope you can see this now. I've cut this section, this middle section, and then this little bottom section. Okay, now we're going to flip over our piece from side to side, and we're gonna do the same thing. Line up at the four and a half inch mark. So now my cuts are over here, and now we're gonna cut this other side. It's gonna be symmetrical, so come down and score that. Uh, not score, cut that first section, cut the third section. I've kind of developed a little system where I lift up with one finger and bring the blade down. You'll find that if you uh, do a few of these, you'll get faster at this. And then the fifth. So we've got these little cuts in between here like that. Now we're going to do cuts on the long side. Okay, so now we're actually going to cut along the score lines just to the first score intersection. So I'm gonna line this up along the score line here, and we're going to go through that first section, skip the middle, and then come down here and do this bottom section. So I'm going to come down to that first score intersection, lift up, bring the blade down to the next score, line and then I'm going to score out. So let me show you what happens. These little pieces, they fall away. We're going to do this all the way along. So every score line, we're going to do that. Always lifting up for the middle section. Okay. So now we've got something that looks like this. Next score line, line it up. I'm gonna push away this time from the score line out to the top. Sometimes that's easier, okay? So now look, these middle pieces now fall away. And then finally, we're gonna do this last piece. And I'm gonna come through here and here. All right, and this is what your piece looks like now. Let's take this aside for a second. Okay, and now we're gonna do some angle cuts. So, to do the angle cuts, I wanna cut, if you have this little um, piece, the shortest segment facing you, we need to cut from here to here. Let me grab a pencil and show you what that looks like. So we're going to do from here to here. And then we're also going to do that over here. And we're going to do it here. And we're going to do it here. So I just want to point out one thing. 
we're not going from this score intersection here. It's from this tab to the outside. From the tab to the outside. I'm trying to angle it so I've got better light. Let me see if I can get another light on here, which will create some shadows. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's any better. But anyway, it's from the tab here. When you get the project sheet in the email, you'll be able to see my diagram really well. Um, so it comes out. So we're going to cut along those angles now. It's easier, I, I like to draw the lines on so I know I'm going in the wrong, right direction because you could go in the wrong direction and then it won't work. So I like to cut from the corner to the inside. I find that a lot easier. So I'm just gonna come along here with my scissors and cut. You could also do this on the paper trimmer, but I find this is a little easier to line up with my scissors. And then um, over here on this side, line it up. And then line it up one more time. Okay, this is such a spectacular box. Once you've made one or two of these, it's not going to sound or look as hard as um, it does. Um, it's just that initial um, getting that all together, um, that will take you a little bit to figure out, but hopefully with my project sheet and the diagrams, it will go easily. All right, now we need to fold along the score lines. So I'm just gonna kind of do a base fold and then I'm gonna come in with my bone folder and I'm going to, um, uh, reinforce those folds and make them a little crisper. So I'm just going to go ahead and just do it in the air first just to get it started on the folds. Okay, so it's kind of easy if I do this like this and then come along here like that and then I'm going to come along here and do the other side. Come on, don't fight me like this. All right, and then I'm going to do all of these one, two, three, and then this last one, four. All right, so now we're going to adhere these together. You can use whatever adhesive you want, but I like Tombow because it's going to hold together. And we're going to cut away afterwards. We're gonna start with the very back. So this would is what I consider the front. So start from the back. We're gonna bring this together like this. Note up here on this top corner, you don't need to put any glue. That corner is gonna be cut off. So once I kind of understand how the box works, I kind of omit that corner. If you get glue on that corner, no worries because we're gonna cut it off in just a little bit. So just hold that in place until it solidifies. You always wanna make sure that you match your edge of the score or the score line up with the edge of your cardstock, okay? So it looks nice and flush. Take a little time lining those things up and that's gonna make your projects look better. Some people are really good at doing that, like detail-oriented people are, are uh, good at doing that, but it doesn't matter if you're not detail-oriented or not, you just need to like pay attention and then maybe it will, will work for you too. Just take a little time lining it up. And then this piece right here, sometimes I wish I wasn't as detail oriented because I don't move at a very fast pace. So I'm coming in with the second angle of the box. This is kind of the middle section. 
we're going to cut off those little guys in a second. And then I'm going to come over on this side of the box here. And again, I'm kind of angling down so I miss that one corner. And bring it together. Okay, we're going to leave this little section for just a moment and we're going to come along and just cut off these angles with paper snips and I find if I kind of bend the box back on itself that's the easiest way to kind of handle this. There is each time there is kind of an easier way to angle your scissors to get it done just right. Okay, and then this one, yeah, like this. And then just snip away that piece. Okay, so we've kind of created the opening for the box, and now we're going to come in here and adhere that little front piece. So these little tabs like this. Come on. And you just want to make sure that you hold this front piece so because there's smaller tabs you want to make sure that you hold those for a few seconds to make sure that they're really tight in there. Okay. All right, so there is the box. You could use the box just like this if you wanted to. It could be like just an angle box like that. Um, but the insert, I think, is what makes this special. So if you're going to add the insert, I would go ahead and put some paper on the inside before we work into the insert. Um, so this is the front of the box. This is the back of the box behind the egg. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just adhere a piece of paper behind there to give it a little bit of pizzazz. This is a one and seven eighths inch square. And this is the Hydrangea Hill paper. Uh, I, I think purple always works well for Easter. I kind of gravitate towards purple. And I'm just going to add a little piece like this. And then, let's see, I want, because this paper has lines, I want to make sure that I lined it up. Otherwise, it might look a little funny. Okay, and then I've got another little piece. And I'm going to put this up top here. I could have done this ahead of time, too, while my piece was still flat, but I think and logically, it's easier to see where the pieces are supposed to go once the box is already assembled. Okay, so now that we have those pieces in place, I'm going to show you how to score that insert piece. You're going to need your scoring tool again, your Simply Score. And, okay, you're going to need a piece of cardstock. You can use according coordinating piece or a matching piece. I'm using the same color and it's a three inch by three inch square and I'm going to score this at the two and a half inch mark on all four sides. Okay, that's what it looks like. Then I'm going to bring in my stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I've got the base layer here. This is the, let me see this, this one. This one's a little flatter to put like this. Okay, so this one's gonna go down and I'm going to grab my circles. And for this particular egg, I found that the smallest scallop circle worked the best. And I'm just going to plop it right in the center. I'm eyeballing it in the center of this piece here. 
Just try and get it as close to center as possible. Okay, I think, I think that looks good. Then place your second plate on top, and then we're gonna roll this through. We're creating that little hole in the center that the egg is going to sit in. And the cool thing about this, I don't know if you can see it, it has little ridges. So that's gonna help your uh, egg stay put. Of course, if you shake the box, um, there is enough wiggle room that your egg's gonna come out of its little hole. But if you keep the egg down into, um, like if you don't shake the box, it's going to stay in place. Um, and those little ridges help it from shifting around. Okay, where did my little paper snips go? Ah. Okay, so now we're gonna cut away all the, the four corners. So I'm just gonna come along here. There's little corners on each of these and just snip them away. I like it. this insert is fairly easy to make. Okay. All right. So then I'm going to use my bone folder to help me fold again. So let's get some base folds. Just kind of get it going and then I can use my bone folder to reinforce it and make it fold a little better. Okay, so that's what the little insert piece looks like. And then we'll bring back in the box. First of all, before you put any glue or anything in there, make sure it fits. Like what if you got the measurements wrong and you got the box all right? So it's a tight fit. It's like a snug fit but it, it shouldn't bow or anything. It should fit in fairly nicely into that little area, okay? Once you've got that, you don't have to put any glue or anything in, but I did. So the best way, if you put glue on the edges here and you push down, the glue is gonna sit up at the top. So I actually put the Tombow glue inside of here so it's going to kind of push it down and hopefully it will stay in place. There'll be a little bit of glue left on the side. So I'm just gonna put this um, just along the inside bottom of this piece. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but I just put a little bit of glue. And then I'm going to come in here I'm going to push down and now if the glue gets a little messy in there it's messy inside and it's not going to be pushed up okay and the glue hopefully will um, come on you're button mine now come here all right let's try it turned one direction. Sometimes things fit better in one direction than the other. I don't know why that is, but because we tested it out, we knew it fit. So I just turned it a quarter turn and it fit a little better. All right, now to get these to stick to the sides, you can press along the edges a little bit. You don't wanna to press too hard because then you're gonna bow your box. Or you can come in here and just kind of pinch along the edge and just get a little bit of, of adhesion going here. And you can use your finger on the outside so you have something to press against. Okay. And so that should hopefully keep your little holder stuck down at the bottom. Okay. So to finish off the inside of this box, I'm going to just add like a little greeting. And this is the one um, that's from the Wish For Everything stamp set. And earlier I cut a little label from the Hippo dice. It's this little one here, the smallest one. This is just basic white cardstock. And I'm going to take Gorgeous Grape, pink powder, 
pad and I'm going to take um, that little greeting. I'll show you what it's, I'll share with you what it says in just a second. I think it's the perfect greeting for the inside of this box. So I'm just going to line that up and stamp it down. It says, sending Easter wishes to someone very sweet. I think that's a really good greeting for the inside. And then just add a little Tombow. Grab my box. Yes, I could have done this earlier and it would be a little easier if I had um, put it on while the box was flat because now I have to kind of fumble around the edges. But logically, sometimes it's easier to see it like this so you can kind of see where everything goes. Okay, and then you can decorate with some flowers and I got these from that wreath. Um, let me see, I've got, I, I wanted to get two of these little flowers and this one's from the Wreath Builders dies, that they're part of the bundle and I just cut out two of these little flowers here and um, I'm going to add them to the inside. But first, I'm going to grab um, some of these little pearl jewels and so many things that are not at my fingertips today. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a pearl jewel and stick it right on the center of those flowers. And one more. Okay, and then you can use a mini glue dot if you want, but I'm going to use Tombow. And then I'm going to take this and put it into the box just above my greeting, like that. And I'll do the same for the other little one. And this one kind of comes down below. Okay, so there's that. I won't put the egg in yet. I'm just going to close up this box for a second so we can decorate the outside. This side for a second. So we're going to add some paper to the outside of this box too. And I'm going to use some more hydrangea hill paper. These are also one and seven eighths inch squares. So I'll just add those. I'm just adding two squares. You could put one on the back as well. I don't, I'm not going to put anything on the angled sides because that would take a little bit more work. You'd have to actually figure out the dimensions and add them on there. And I really don't think it's necessary. I think it looks nice just like that. And oh, besides, we're going to wrap some ribbon around the box. So that will kind of also make the sides look better. So we'll just add these two little pieces of paper. Okay. So that will make the box look just really pretty. And now let's add a greeting to the front of the box. I want a piece of basic white and I need two things. These are also um, from that bundle, Arrange a Wreath. And I'm going to grab my Highland Heather ink pad. My desk is getting really messy now. Sorry about that. But I will clean up in a moment. Let's take this. This is kind of a, a piece like a... Um, what would you call it, like a banner or a plaque piece. It kind of looks, reminds me a little bit of a palette of wood. And I'm just going to ink this up in Highland Heather, but I don't want a really dark Highland Heather. I just want kind of a light. So I'm gonna stamp off onto a piece of scrap paper and then I'm going to, this has a hair on it, stamp onto here. Okay, I want just a really kind of light plaque. And then I'm going to take my gorgeous grape ink pad, which has more purple intensity. And then I'm gonna add the Happy Easter with 
full strength gorgeous grape all right so that's what it looks like done with the inky part of my project and now um, I'm just going to cut the, this out with paper snips. There isn't a die for this, but it's really easy to cut out a rectangle with paper snips. So I'm just going to come along here. I'm leaving a little white border. And then I'll just come down this way. All right, and there's my little greeting. And I'm going to add this to my box just a little bit below center because I want to leave a little extra room for the flower up top. So if I go just a little bit below center, that gives me just a little bit extra room to add that flower. So the front of the box, you know, if you have to check it out, make sure you open it so you know where the front is. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little flower, and these again are from the Arrange a Wreath bundle, and I cut a bigger flower out in Gorgeous Grape, a smaller one in Highland Heather, and then I'm just going to adhere these two together, and grab a pearl, um, I think I want a medium sized one. And add that to there and then I'm going to pop some glue on there and if I angle this just right I can get it just a little bit onto the banner a little bit off and there's just enough room to squeeze it on there okay now I want to add some ribbon so here is my egg, and where's my other egg? So of course, before you add your ribbon, you do wanna you do wanna add your egg. So you just open this up, and then this nests kind of right down into that little hole. Just it just is really perfect, actually. And then you close this up, and then. This ribbon just works really great with this box. So you're just gonna come in and cut enough ribbon so that it wraps around with maybe two inches on either end. And then you can come in and tie your first knot. And I want this tight, but not too tight because you're going to have to move it on and off. So here, uh, I'm using locking tweezers and I've got my locking tweezers propped up on a block so that I, they don't shift. And then I'm gonna come through and do my second knot. And now I can take some time to make my center knot look good. And so I'm not gonna tie it super tight so I can still get it on and off and then I'll angle cut these guys like that. All right, this one needs to be a little shorter. Okay, so there is, are the two boxes, well the opened box and the closed box, and it's really cute. You will love this, it's just adorable, absolutely adorable. Okay, so if you're going to make these and say you don't have as much time, we also sell tiny clear treat boxes. And you know what? I haven't given this a try with designer series paper. I don't know if it's strong enough. I made this insert out of regular cardstock. So why don't we give it a try with some um, designer series paper? Let me cut a little piece for myself. Um, I have a pattern that I want across the rim. Let me grab it. All right, 
let's give it a whirl with some designer series paper. Let's see if we can pretty this up a little bit because when I originally did it last night, it, it was, time was running out. The time runs out in the day. Let's see if it looks, if it can hold up to the egg. So I've got the piece of three by three designer paper. And again, I'm gonna score at the two and a half inch mark on all four sides. And then bring in my stamping cut and emboss machine. Get rid of this. Bring this over. Okay, I think I'm going to cut on the back side because, let's see, can I see on the front side? No. This paper is really busy and I can barely see the lines, my score lines, which make it easier to kind of arrange everything. Okay, so I'm gonna cut on the back side and that circle is just going in the center. It's the same size as before. Okay. Let me grab this piece and get this all out of the way. And then we're gonna cut on this side because the other side is too hard to see. So I'm gonna cut away the four corner squares. If I can find them, might help if I bend them a little bit. No, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fold these down first so I can see where my score lines are. So much easier to find with cardstock. Okay, so now let's see if I can find my little corners. And then this one, and then this one. All right, I'm gonna grab another tiny treat box. Actually, they're, no, this is not what I'm looking for. Oh, these are acetate card boxes. Let me grab my tiny treat boxes. I uh, grabbed, they're in the same size bag. I grabbed the wrong ones. These are the um, the clear tiny treat boxes. And I have a link to them in my supply list. And you're just going to open the box up. It's hard to see on camera, but you fold it one way. And then it's easiest if you fold all the pieces the way they need to go before you start. Oh, folding everything in. So let's do this, 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 and this. So um, I like to fold in the U-shaped piece first on the bottom, then the two pieces that look the same from the sides. And then the, the piece that has this little kind of tab that sticks out, okay? And then let's try this insert and see if the paper insert will actually work, if it will hold up to the, um, the weight of the egg. Okay. So I'm pushing this down to the bottom. And then I'm gonna take this egg and stick it in. Well, it's not too bad. And then put this in and then tuck this in like this. So you could do it with um, 
with the um, designer series paper or you could do it with the cardstock and then you just tie some ribbon around there and that would be your box you could also um, decorate it up with a greeting and some flowers as well um, for this box though I think the the charm is you can see right in through to to the egg so the more things you put around it the the less um, the less your egg's gonna show through. So this one probably is a box that you're not going to decorate up quite as much. But I just wanna show, show you that one as an alternate, just so you could see what the difference was between using something that's pre-existing and making your own little box. Cause I think these little boxes are so, so super cute, right? Okay, I am going to go back and look at your questions and answer anything that might need answering. I'm here. All right, I am going to look at your comments right now. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am looking to see if there are any um questions okay i d i tried to answer your question about the size of the egg if i can get more information about that i'll put it on my blog post Virgit says your project sheets are just perfect thank you brenda well thank you i'm so glad you like them um pat says i think 1.2 ounces for the caramel cadbury cream egg that could be true it, it's a standard their standard size egg it's not um the not a tiny one it's like it's like the 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 bigger ones it's not the they they tend to come in the little boxes but my shopper couldn't find the one in the little boxes so they were actually loose in a box and you bought them individually um d says you have a way of teaching us in a way that makes everything look so easy oh i'm glad it looks easy cutting those tab sections seems much easier now that you've explained it and show how to do those well i hope it will be easy i think honestly i've i had to do a few during my prep work so i could have something to photograph and after i had done i i did one wrong i don't know where my wrong piece went i angle cut one of the pieces the wrong way there is a raw a right way and a wrong way so when you get my project sheet follow along the diagram orient it the right way um you can cut without putting pencil marks on there you can absolutely do that but if you're going to do that, make sure you take that diagram and have it in front of you and have it facing the same way and then do your cuts so that you don't cut them the wrong way. If you cut them the wrong way, then you have to start over. There's no way to fix that. Um, good morning, everyone. Karen says, I love watching you, you create. Maybe because you're so detail-oriented like I am. Uh, well, I'm glad I'm appealing to the detail-oriented people, and I hope if you're not detail-oriented, um, I love my big picture friends because, um, and my husband's more of a big picture person too. Opposites attract, right? And, um, you know, sometimes I'll change something in the house and he won't notice for several days that, anything's been changed and finally I'll have to say didn't you notice that I changed this and he's like oh yeah um but I I love because he's got vision you know big big picture people they sometimes have because they're not bogged down by all those details they can like look at the big picture so I hope if you're um a person that isn't detail oriented that maybe I can help you put together this project um by showing you the details so that you can do it so, but I, I'm a detail oriented person myself. <laughs> uh, Vera Blue says, this is an amazingly cute box. I like how you can use those little acetate boxes too. Yeah, that's the kind of the other, other way to do it is with the little acetate card um, boxes, the tiny treat boxes. I wanted to show an alternative if you um, didn't want to make boxes. Some people like to make things and some, some people that will absolutely drive them crazy. So um, it, it kind of, it makes me, um, when I meet someone that 
doesn't like 3D projects. I'm like, really? You know, I it's just like, um, it's weird, you know, it's like foreign to me, but there are people out there that don't like make 3D projects. They prefer cards and that's great. Um, sometimes I make cards too, but 3D I think is um, where my, my true heart is at. Um, hello, Madge, I'm glad you're here in real, real time today. And um, I'm sorry, I'm not reading off everyone's names today. Um, Good morning to everyone who joined. Um, Loretta has a suggestion, love the boxes. I like the clear one, maybe put a little tag on top. That's a great idea. I like that idea, Loretta. You could um, take um, like the Happy Easter. I've got a lot of glare going on here. Um, but you could take that Happy Easter from the front of the box and put a little hole in the corner and tie that on there. I think that would look really cute. Um, or any of our little labely y um, punches um, would, will look good. You just need to have a little happy Easter or something to put in there so that it will make um, sense. Yes. Uh, Dee says her, her husband and, and uh, her are opposites as well. Yeah, I think sometimes us opposites like we, we attract. We're not opposite in every way, but there are some clear differences and um, they're good, it's good, and sometimes it's bad because, uh, you know, like you don't always understand each other. Like, how could you not notice the thing that I, the new thing that I did? Um, so it's it's just kind of funny um, how, how people are, are different that way. And thank goodness we're not all the same, right? Because um, I always need help with the big picture thinking. Um, and probably my husband needs the help of someone like me who's detailed that can fuss with the details in our life in our lives so anyway that's it for my Friday tutorial if you're watching this after the fact and you have a question please just post it in the comments below because I will get to it and I will uh, help you uh, hopefully help answer your question um, I love this box design because I think it could be used for other other things and it's just super super cute all right I hope you have a great weekend and um, I will be back next Tuesday on Facebook with a live at 10 a.m. Eastern and then Friday I'll be um, back here on YouTube with another video for you and it's always on Fridays I always do either a 3d design or I will do uh, a a fun fold card like something that's a little fancier all right have a great weekend guys bye bye